Aí, Vê. Vai que bom. Do live. Hello and welcome to this webinar about how to solve the top five print problems with transert screwdrivers. Now, uh, my name is Roger from Adria Distribution, and you can find my email down there if you want me, and you have the company details there as well if you would have any questions as we go. Now, uh, this is a listen-only webinar, so you won't be able to talk to me, but there's a Q&A uh, button there that you can type your questions and then we will have a look at them and see if we can uh, make this somewhat interactive. If there's something specific you want to see in the end, we can try to show you that as well. Now, first a little bit about who is Triceret. So now I've been working with Triceret for about 20 years soon and they started their, their company 23 years ago, um, they made the first virtual printer driver in 1999. Uh, that was screwdrivers. And they also developed their own page description language called TMF, which is really a key differentiator between um, screwdrivers as a virtual printer driver and others. Now, this has been expanded to also support scanning and uh, a lot of customers uh, that are well known trust uh, Tricer to provide them with reliable printing. Now, here's a little bit of a picture with uh, some customers in all kinds of verticals. Now, there are uh, some Nordic ones there that you might recognize. Um, what these have in common is not normally that they have a wide flora of printers uh, and they have customer facing applications so that it, it is actually very important that it prints and that it prints in time. Now, why would you use a universal printer driver or why would you use screwdrivers? Now, Everyone that has worked in RDS or Terminal Server, VDI, and the, the remote kind of printing solutions know that there are very many models and brands of printers, and they are not really, uh, there's nothing universal between them, except that the fact that they print something on a paper. And as you, as an admin, um, you have been fighting this as one of the biggest problems for more than 20 years. Now, operating systems evolve. There's new operating systems that come and drivers has also been updated to some extent, but there still remains the fact that the tools to address printing in RDS and Terminal Server are very similar to how they were 20 years ago. So if your users are experiencing problems, then you will have to look at either replacing the driver, mapping a driver to a different driver, or using the built-in universal driver, EasyPrint, Citrix UPD, and so on. Now, these, are, these universal drivers are, are also often recommended to be used as a fallback, so that if you do not have the actual driver, on your server, then use the universal driver. Now, that comes with the problem is that it may not, may not support all the features that you actually need to print and get out this something on your paper. Now, and there's a there's a trade off there. So, Triceret did not do screwdrivers as a fallback solution it is meant to be a printing solution for your environment in all kinds of scenarios so uh, you should be able to trust it to and that it will work for your users regardless of the printer that's there that's that's the whole idea now so what does this mean for you as an admin so well 
the end, it's user experience. And user experience is a very, very hot topic now. It's been, you know, everyone is talking about user experience for the last couple of years. And this slide is actually 15 years old from Tricerat, whereas everyone was saying, well, this just has to work better than my PC. This thing has to work better than my PC. Now, they're talking about a remote session. Uh, and as you can see, at the time they were probably struggling with frame rates keeping up to date or something like that, where, where there's been a lot of improvements for that with HDX and so on, but printing hasn't really evolved that much. Now, so what are the top five printing problems? Well, obviously that depends on who you ask. So we have asked around to a few partners about how they feel the customers uh, their customers' uh, biggest issues are in, in RDP and Citrix environments. And we took those answers and we boiled them down to the answers to this top list. <clears throat> so, and these are the ones that we will try to address today. So, first of all, you have spillover issues. Now, spillover issues, that could be like in the, uh, in the old days, that usually meant that the spooler crashed, uh, you got a blue screen of death, something like that. It's usually driver related, but these days it's usually that it, printing becomes unreliable. Printers come and go, printers are not visible, um, and it's really hard to know what's causing it because you have, it may be working sometimes, then it stops working. It may be driver related, it may be a two drivers that do not really like being together on the same server. Uh, it depends on who, who logs in, how many users, and so on. Really hard to figure out what, it, what the issue is. Um, <clears throat> so the second one is slow printing. Now, uh, the slow printing usually comes down to bandwidth and so on, uh, and then also maybe print design, how, how are you printing, where are your print servers, where are your users, how is the print job going, and also what are you printing? Are you printing high, rich, deep color graphics, or are you printing, you know, text? So, but people, you know, they pay print, nothing happens, but wh why is it taking so long? And there are reasons for that, and we'll have a look at um, how we address that as well. Now, default printer. Now, this may sound like a minor problem, but it's really frustrating for a user to, as they are going to print, they can't print. Maybe they have, uh, you know, cleaned their profile because they had some other issue with the profile and they don't have the settings left anymore, so you need to do that. Um, maybe they are in a different office today, so the printer, default printer is not there. Uh, maybe you know the solution didn't detect that you moved around. So this is also really frustrating, but there are fixes for that in the product that will help. So and also printer naming. So printer naming uh, is key for the user to actually know what printer am I going to use. So if I don't know which printer I'm supposed to select when I'm printing, I can't really expect to know where it's going to come out. So, uh, but in addition to that, there are also applications that need printer names to be consistent. So you can't have the, <coughs> sorry, my printer in session X and that kind of thing. So they, they need that to, to be consistent between sessions. And we can address that as well in many different ways. And then all of these come down to support tickets. Now, support tickets are generated of all of these, obviously, uh, but they're also generated, or, or I, I put them in there because if you are trying to do testing of drivers before you implement them in your environment, that is a tedious task. That is a lot of work to actually know that it will work because you cannot only test it 
with one driver, you need to test it basically uh, with all your drivers, and usually you won't know until you actually let users onto the system to log in and you have all these conflicts with many people using stuff at the same time, and that's when you will know if it works or not. Now, we don't have that problem because we only have one driver. Now, so support tickets, and we have seen support tickets where there is a loss of 70% of support tickets, and the, the help desk, they actually thought that their phone system broke down because there were no calls coming in. So that is actually a true story. So um, look at that. So <clears throat> what we're going to do now, we're going to do a demonstration, obviously, because there's no PowerPoint is not so fun. And we will demo the different flavors of screwdrivers. So now we will, there's three different flavors of screwdrivers in version 7. Uh, they are Essentials, Pro, and Enterprise. And I will have a slide later on with more details on that. Now, what we'll do, the first one, the first demo will be for a user, I call it user category A. So this is an office worker accessing a hosted print intensive line of business application. So think CRM or uh, you know some some applications where you're lo logging in and you're printing maybe receipts or receipts or something like that, and you need it. You're printing to a local print queue because you have a local PC or a Think Client or, or Mac or whatever that has the uh, that has the printer plugin, and there's no site to site VPN. And in this case, I'm going to demo this using Windows Virtual Desktop, meaning that I will log into Windows Virtual Desktop and show you how this is configured, and then um, show you how this is printed. Now, the solution with this is then it will be Screwdrivers Essentials, which is the entry point of screwdrivers. So, um, and there's the components here is there's a client plugin that plugs into your uh, RDS client or Citrix client or Windows Virtual Desktop client. It loads up the plugin and loads uh, and is using a virtual channel within your uh, communication protocol, I say RDP, so on. Uh, and there's a server component. And the server component. Uh, I will come into when we log in and show you how that is configured. So the idea is that you log in, you get your printers, and then you print. Easy as that. Now, we will switch. Start the Windows Virtual Desktop Client, and we will start the session. It will ask me for my credentials, so I will just log in as me. In this case, I'm actually an admin on the server. It doesn't matter if you're an admin or user, well, the admin can't change or user can't change in the configuration. But uh, there's there's just a limit on how many users I have on Windows Virtual Desktop at the moment. Um, so. No, I got it. OK, so this is the Windows Virtual Desktop session. And as you could, um, could imagine, there's a configuration. So what you do, you install the server software on the server side. And this, um, there's, there's basically the server component that installs the server. There's also a license server. The license server uh, will obviously give you the licenses to the server. So in Windows Virtual Desktop, that is a really good thing to use because it you put it on a central server and you log in and you get your licenses uh, as you log in. And they are concurrent user licenses so that you can have as many sessions as you like, or you could, or you could also use it in multiple systems at the same time. 
Now the configuration for the server uh, with screwdriver essentials is per server. So in this case for the Windows Virtual Desktop, and this is the multi-session one, so this could would affect all the users on the same host. And uh, but obviously if you would use the like one-to-one -one kind of thing, then you would you would it would just use be for that user. Now first section here, printer creation. So this is obviously something that you will recognize uh, what, what they are. So you have uh, what printers do you want to connect? So add all, do not add, add only the default. And I've set it to add only the default from start. Now, you could also set the numbers, the numbers of printers that you want to add. So a set fixed number uh, and or add, add all with the default. Uh, <clears throat> There's no reason why you wouldn't add all, all client printers uh, at all times, but it just shows you how, how the different settings. <clears throat> so set client default as default on the server. Now, this is um, this will set the default as the server on the server. You can also turn it off. So if you turn it off, that will actually not set the default printer when you log in. And uh, this is uh, request specifically in Windows Virtual Desktop or where you, if you have other mechanics of doing printing like group policies or something like that, that where you're adding printers to the session, but you do not want to bring a set decline default as default, you can do that with screwdrivers. That's just fine. Um, we have something called allow default printer spoofing where you can select a different default printer in your session than on your uh, client itself. And that is, well, it's allowed here, but you configure the spoofing itself on the client side. We can look at that in a moment. <clears throat> so then you have stuff about recapture printers. So you can recapture printers in 30 seconds. And that's also if you have a script or something that is changing the default printer, and we can recheck that the default printer is set to the local one if that was required in the first place. Now we can reflect changes. So if you add a printer during, if you plug in a USB printer, we can add that in the session directly uh, without you having to log out and log in again. Remove them as well uh, and so on. If you disconnect, reconnect, we will check for new printers and add them as we go. Now that's the general tab. <clears throat> if we look at the printers tab, or printer configuration tab. This one has actually many settings and it's expanded. So there's four settings here. Now naming is is obviously the naming part. Uh, so printer name is the actual printer name on the client. And then you add user session. Now user session is, is uh, maybe not the best name. So if you want to change it, you can do that. Now, to one of the preset ones of so this one. Now here it says with big capitals warning yeah, and it sounds like you will die if you change it. Well, the fact is that if you, you need to know that you can get a conflict here. So now if you would just add printer and remove everything else, then if two users log in to the same server with the same username, it will be a conflict. And the reason for that is that it would have the same name and there's still the same registry it's playing with, so you can't have that. So beware of that. And this, this is uh, specifically a problem with the client printers because the client printers will have different ports. So the port uh, for user A and user 2 are not the same as they are communicating through two different virtual channels. So one to user A and one to user B. So keep that in mind. But if you wanted it to be somewhat static, you could say, well, actually, I wanted to have the printer uh, machine name. Machine in this case means client name. Then I would remove this one and so on. Now, <clears throat> and that would basically give you a printer name colon machine name colon, and I'll just do like that instead and see how that goes. Now it would then be printer name, user or the client name, and then a bracket. And 
Now, <clears throat> these are limits. So if you have applications that have issues with names that are too long, you can limit the components there. Haven't seen one of those in a long time, but they were out there a long time ago. Extended settings. Now, extended settings are there for you to troubleshoot mostly. So I would recommend turning it off unless you really need to see it. Well, you really need to use it. Uh, there are some things there. Yeah, so you can pre-configure things here. So you can enable the tab, which I can show later, and then you can preset the settings of that configuration from here. But it affects all the users here, so uh, just make sure that you know what you're doing uh, or have reference with us and we can help you with what you want to accomplish. Now there is an action. This is also um, for running a command at the time of print. So you could you could basically uh, with the extended options you can export a PDF file and you could also do a script so that you would copy stuff somewhere and so on. We've had customers doing this for archiving purposes or print jobs. It is uh, <clears throat> sorry, it is possible. Uh, well, actually, and the PDF stuff is under export here. So this is the export tab for doing that. And also enable these. So you can you can remove these if you don't need them. I'm going to change the naming, so I will just apply that. <clears throat> so if you go down to advanced, this controls the advanced tab of the spooler driver. So if you have uh, settings for that, uh, this normally just leave it as it is. Denial. Now denial uh, means that if you and that you can not create printers if you want. So if you want to deny a printer, you just type in the driver name here and we will not create the universal driver of that printer. Now Microsoft XPX document provider v4 may be one of those that you don't want to pick up. That's the actual driver name, even though it may be named something else on the client. So look at the driver name itself. Now we can also disable the creation of USB printers or we can disable the creation of network printers. And the reason for disabling the network printers would maybe be that if you are and if you have a laptop and you have printers that are you know, on the print server that is in a central office maybe, then you may not want, or maybe even in the data center where your Citrix server is, you may not want to create a universal printer of that so that because you would then send the print jobs from your server down to your client and back to the server again and to the printer. So it would be better to send it directly to the print server. And then you can turn that off here. <clears throat> Client printers are basically USB port, local ports, LPT ones and so on. And this is the licensing. So I'm pointing to the license server. You could also, uh, or uh, it is possible to have a node locked license if you have had one in the past for V6 or V4 or something, you can upgrade that. And now we only sell uh, per user licenses for essentials. Uh, logging, this is troubleshooting. So if you have a problem <coughs> with anything with printing, you could always reach out to support and get uh, get help. Now that is uh, one big differentiator between having a other universal driver because it's very hard to get support on it. Either it will work or it won't. Uh, this you can you can say, well, we're having this uh, Printing, we can see that um, whatever it is, there's an issue here. Can you help us? If it only happens on this specific printer, can you help us look at that? And we can then generate logs, spool files, whatever, look at it, and maybe even address it in the code, uh, which we've done before. And this is just an about page. So, so what we'll do now is I uh, will just do add client or client printers as well, and we change the naming mm -hmm. now. Actually, I logged in before, right? So, and then we had the setting set to add only the default printer. And my default printer is actually this HP printer. <clears throat> so, and these are the ones that are actually installed on the, the OS itself. 
now looking at the printer itself, this will actually be the screwdriver driver, right? Screwdrivers. So I'm just going to log out and log in again, and we'll have more. Actually, I just can hit disconnect. Disconnect. So I disconnected there. On the client side, there's a screwdriver endpoint client. Now this plugs into your uh, terminal server, so just client. <clears throat> and you have a list of your local printers. So I have not that many printers. I have a lot of application kind of printers, but this was my default one. And there are settings here, so you can well you can turn off the printer. So if you don't want to create one, you could disable it from being created. But you could also deny it on the driver name itself. So a user could go in here, or if you talk to the user, you could say, well, don't create that one. Click on that, on or off, and it will not create. There are also settings that if you want to set a setting for the extended option. So maybe you want to have a second print dialog for this one. So if you turn that on, it will basically open the local printer dialog and support any print feature there. So like stapling, hole punching, stuff that are not you know, common ones. And you can pre-configure that on a per printer on a per client base. So very flexible. Uh, I don't want to say that. Uh, and here, this is the session so that we can add stuff dynamically as we log in. Uh, <clears throat> and there's some other troubleshooting ones there. Usually, just leave them as they are. They're not, uh, it's not super, super important. Um, usually, there are specific ones that need them. And there's a login for the client as well. And as you can see, we can log a lot of stuff uh, to a lot of details. Now the client is also auto updating. So if you have, if there's a newer client, you can it, it will auto update uh, as needed. So let's log in again. <clears throat> so now instead of seeing those five printers or whatever we had, we should be seeing a lot more printers. Cold coffee, perfect. So we're logging in. And as you can see, the, the printers are, are added here as we log in. Now, what happens here is that the client is reading the printer uh, information on the client side, and it's reading all the printer settings. So trays, resolution, color support, duplexing units, blah, 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 et cetera. Everything that makes the printers unique. Then when we log in, we have the screwdriver driver there. They do not know anything about this information and it is injected. So we're saying, okay, hello server, here's the printer. The printer has this name and these are the trays. And the server goes, okay, I'm gonna create that. So it's doing that. <clears throat> and if you look here, now it looks like we only have one printer. Now this is because Windows in 2016 is sorting the printers based on port name. Now, all our local printers will have the actual same port. So from here, we will only see one, which is a bit interesting. But if you go into an application, you will see all of them. Now, as you can see, we have the printer name now that is on the, that is actually on a print server. Surface book, Roger. Now, there's a limit on how many names you can have in that from stars. So this is my client name and then the hyphen and then the, so that's the result of my name change. Now, if I then open an application, I'll just open WordPad because it's an easy enough application. So you see here that I have more printers. So I have this fax from uh, the Surface Book Roger. I have the HP printer. I have my Mammoth printer, which is an application that I would probably deny if I if I don't need it. And Microsoft Printer to PDF, and you can see I have all these printers here. Now, if I um, the features that you will see here will uh, in in this dialog depends on the application. So, for example, if you would have a, a PDF 
application that is a lot smarter around printing in general. So that will have all the options and all the fancy UI for you. Now this will just have the, but if you go into preferences of the printer, you will see that the information is picked up. So <clears throat> here, and, and on this one, the, the language here will actually depend on the language of the driver locally and what it tells us. So you can see that you have all the resolutions, paper sizes and so on here. And if you create custom paper sizes, that will also be picked up. Now, here you can see that it's the driver is kind of semi Swedish because it's telling us that it has a shoes automatically in Swedish. But over here, it was actually talking about portrait and landscape, and that depends on how how when we query the driver, what is it actually telling us? It may also be down to a setting on the driver. So that's also something that you can look. Now we looked at the extended options and the export stuff before, and those are these, these tabs that I spoke about. So these are the extended options that you can play around with for troubleshooting. Now, I strongly suggest that you don't change anything unless you really have a problem and directed by support, because we, we should be able to fix it without this. It should be a work anyway. But if, if you're, you can, you can play with the rendering basically. Uh, <clears throat> so second dialog though is can be useful if you want to use, for example, hole punching or, or something that is not a Windows standard for uh, printing. So that will open up the local dialog and you can select whatever you want there. Now you got export, uh, action, and about. <clears throat> I'm not going to talk about that too much. So if I hit print now, what will happen now is that the print job will go, uh, the application renders it as a, uh, oh yeah, it opens this in the second dialog. So the, the print job is rendered as an EMF file from the application. We are converting it to a TMF. We're then sending it down the virtual channel in a stream format, so we're streaming it page by page, meaning that as soon as the first page reaches the client, it will start printing. Now, this is a different than using an EMF version because EMF has page description information at the end of the file. So unless you spool the whole file, you will not be able to start the printing. Now, as you could see, these are the specific settings that this driver had locally, and I can then use some of that is different. Now the client receives the print job, decompresses, turns it from TMF to EMF and prints it out on the printer. Now there's also font handling in between there. So if you don't have fonts on the server, so, you know, the client side that you have on the server side, we can embed that or we will automatically embed that in the print job so that uh, the print job will look as it is intended to look like. And then you hit print and then the print job will come out on your client. Uh, awesome. Um, that's about what I'm going to show you in terms of screwdrivers essentials. So I'm going to log out of this one. Now, if you have specific problems, questions around that, we can check. But I'm not sure if there are any questions right now. And I will have to check if there are, or actually, I can't see them. Uh, Sophia, let me know if there are questions later on. So that was the the uh, screwdrivers essentials. Now, as you can see, well, this is what I talked about. So we have the session, session server, and we print there. It's converted to EMF to TMF and then compressed down to the client and out to the printer. So that's the print path, as I call it. Now, the next demo is a different one. So this is a doctor using a thing client from, from going from room to room. So imagine you're in a hospital and the doctor comes in and he usually uses a smart card or something to log in and then he, he talks to you trees and he needs to print something and he wants, he wants it to come out on the printer in that room. 
if it prints in a different room, there may be a different client there or customer, you know, patient there. And then that's not good, right? So we, we want to assign the printers to the room or to the location. And we want this to follow him. So not only should the printers follow as the he or she moves around, but also the default printer needs to follow. Now we can do this with screwdrivers Pro or Pro or Enterprise. Now they both support print server printing and also location. And so, <clears throat> so you would install screwdrivers Pro on the session host. Windows Virtual Desktop already has Citrix. And then you would install a print agent on a print server agent on your print server. Now that print server, you don't need to change anything on it. You just install a uh, print server agent on it as it is. And you can use the existing queues. You don't need to change them, create new ones or anything like that. Now we can assign network printers based on client name, for example. Uh, and we can then set a client default printer for the client. And we can log in and print. So how do we do that? Well, we are going to <clears throat> show that for you. So, and, and I'm going to log in. So I'm going to log into a RDS server. Just going to have some more. Uh, Oh, I already had it started. Awesome. So, <clears throat> on your terminal server, you would install Screwdrivers Pro or Screwdrivers Enterprise for this to work. Now, this is the central management console. So, this comes with everything from Screwdrivers Essentials, but it also adds some other features. Now, for example, it adds support for print servers. And so what this is that you would install on the print server, and I have one called logging or storage in Swedish. Um, and you install an agent there and you add the print server. So you add printer here and they will ask you what kind of printer do you want to add and you add it and then you type in the information. You type in the host name here, and you click update printers. And it will import the printers. So here are my printers that are on that server. Now I can deny them, I can assign them, I can do a lot of stuff here. I can't go through all of that today. But what we wanted to do is we wanted to assign the printers based on the location, right? <clears throat> so here in the assignments pane, you have Active Directory. Now you could have um, computers. So if you have computers objects, you could assign them on computer objects as well. But in this case, I'm going to assign it on the tab network tab here. This is a structure that you create that will make sense to you. So in this case, I have something called a hospital and I have a room. And in the room, I have a client. I managed to move that room. That was cool. And so and what you do here is you create either a group, which is the room stuff. You create a new computer, which is a, either a name of the client or the IP address, or you can create an IP range so that you can assign a printer based to a client range. So maybe a local office, for example. So in this case, what I will do is I will assign printers. So <clears throat> in this case, we want to assign printer one and printer two to the two weeks one. Two weeks is the server name because I'm going to loop back a login to, to show you this as a thin client and to save some time. Uh, this will ask you if you uh, how you want to add this printer. So do you want only want to show this? So always show this printer. This is basically what it was used to call the assign. So yes, the printer will be assigned when you log in. You can also have it so that they can do self service on them and, or remove them or not. But in this case, we don't want them to remove them. This is this is just how it's going to be. 
Now, what I will do is I will <coughs> then set printer one as the default printer for the at the login. Now, <coughs> Surface Book Roger is my, as you saw, my other client, and then I will want to have a different setting on that. So on that one, I'm going to add the PR1, PR3, because that is another one. And then I'm going to add the Samsung one as well. And in fact, I want the, well, let's say PR3. So now, <clears throat> so this is regardless of who is the user logging in. Okay, so now if I log in now, uh, I will, so, <laughs> so now I'm logging in from, as you can see, I am on the two weeks server, uh, which is an internal joke. Uh, actually, I need to type the password. So now I'm logging in as user Roger test. Now Roger test did not have any printers assigned to him, but he's logging in from the client name two weeks. So he should be able to get those printers assigned to him, right? <clears throat> so and then we'll do printers. This is always interesting because if you don't, if you do it too quickly, it will not show it. Then you do printers, and now let's see if this actually did work. And yes, we do have we have printer one and printer two. Now there's some other printers here as well. In this case, oh, sorry, actually, uh, as you can see, this is the easy print one. I didn't turn that off, so it will it will be the easy print one. So. That's why we have many printers, but here you can see we have the setting for standard. Now, this is using the exact same driver uh, as the client one, so you would expect it to look the same, basically. It will not uh, have the client dialog option, but I will show you something about that later. But so you can see here the name, and in this case, we have even have the PR1. So now we don't even have the long name so that it's not called printer on this host on um, session so and so, as you can see, so <coughs> as, you, as you this one. So this will be the same name every time the user logs in, regardless of who logs in. And this is a specific setting where you have a need that it, we, we have a fixed setting in the application saying that the name has to be named PR1. And, and this was a specific use case for a customer was in Denmark. <clears throat> so the settings here are the same. So when you, when you hit print, it will do the same thing. EMF, TMF, compression, send to the print server and out to the printer and all the settings will vary depending on what the actual printer supports. So in this case, and, and then this one looks different, you see. So, and then <clears throat> you can select whatever you wanna, wanna do. So trace and so on. This one had an English one. That one had yeah, different ones. No, it actually it looks the same. All right, now we have the export, which is the PDF stuff, action, and about. And you can control this in the in the central uh, configuration, how this will look on a per printer level. So, all right, so the doctor is done. He's printed, and uh, I'm not gonna show that. He's printed the document and he's off to his next patient. So he just either probably removes his card as he moves to the next room and the session is disconnected. And now <clears throat> the user, he comes into the next other room, uh, which is 
then he logs in. Now, he should be getting printer three and that Samsung printer now. And we, as you can see, we are taking over where we were. <clears throat> and it will take a little bit of time for it to do. And, but you have printer three and standard, you know. So then once the doctor feels that he's ready to print, he has the printer in his room where he's at without having to move uh, or, you know, without risk of printing stuff that shouldn't go somewhere else as well. Uh, that is pretty cool, I think. Mm -hmm. And that shows you how that works. Now I'm going to log this user out now and I'm going to continue with PowerPoint because we have another use case that we're going to show you as well. So, so we go back to the PowerPoint. So we had the doctor moving from room to room. Now we have a roaming user. So, all right, so we have a roaming user that is basically uh, moving. So he's moving from one office to the other and he wants to have the printer where he's at rather than where he was yesterday, right? Uh, <clears throat> and he needs the default printers to follow as well. So this is similar to what we just did with the doctor even though it's different so we're gonna we're gonna talk about that as well so uh, we will assign the printer to a location so we can do that usually in this case you would probably do it on an ip network uh, and then have the uh, and then create them and then the user can go in and select which one they want um, so we will go back to the uh, and interface. Sorry, need that one. Um, actually, I logged out the admin before. It wasn't really what I intended to do. Um, but okay. <clears throat> and then we did the disconnect. So. We will do the same kind of thing here now. So we will log in as the user, but we, ha we have already assigned the printers as admin assigned, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear the default and I'm gonna show you why I wanna do that later. So I have the printers assigned to me and they are as before. And then I am going to, yeah. So this is what I'm gonna do first. So the same kind of demo, but we will show you that the user can actually, well, we can use add another one. And we can show that, that it's dynamic. So <clears throat> we'll do the other one, we'll log in again. And then, 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 then. So, and then we have the password, super secret password. Uh, so we're logging in again as the from the two weeks client or IP network range. It doesn't really matter. You can assign it on a combination on everything. Um, time moves quick when you're having fun. So we have logged into the session. Now let's see what we have. So if we So there was no, there were no default printer setting set for that user, right? So what happens then is that they will use whatever was set in the in the profile itself. So, or if there's no nothing set, it will actually. Uh, oh, awesome. Yeah, that one. So we 
Oh, yeah, so it's been detected that I have one, one on the server. Because <clears throat> I already created them. Never mind, but that, that doesn't matter. So these printers are here. Uh, and uh, I got that Canon printer as well, which is the screwdriver one. So I had no default printer set. So like I said, it would take the one from the profile or if the spool would just pick one. In this case, it actually took that one. So EasyPrint had it set to set the default printer and it, it, it did that in the end. Now, we have our tool here <clears throat> that will actually uh, allow you to set the default printer uh, so on a location base. So in this case, I'm going to set the one PR2 as default. So now this one will actually give you a set this in the database for the user <clears throat> so that if you log out and out from here and i had it will save that to the database so i'm logging out oh now i'll log out to the server again awesome and no this is the server all right perfect <clears throat> so i log in again now I'm actually going to turn off easy print just because it's quicker. Well, as you saw, easy print created the printers. We don't disable any other print solution so that if you have a combination of things, you can have that and we don't we don't turn stuff off. And now we're logging in again. And now before we didn't have the default printer set. This is awesome. There. So now it should have, yeah. So it says PR2 as the printer. Yeah. So if I now disconnect this one. Uh, just want to make sure I'm disconnecting the right one. So I'll disconnect that one. Flip. And then I'll log in from the local client. Now the local client had two other ones default right so this client had two other printers assigned to them to that location with the client name so as we just as we reconnect it should be removing the printers here shortly and as you see it is doing that now, if you click on the screwdriver printers app, now the screwdriver printers app is the self-service part of the solution. So yeah, you have that and you can see the printers that you have here. Here, So this one was assigned to me as a user. So if I set that on the, on the user, so this was assigned to me um, in the screwdriver. This is the part where it actually did not show me the right start menu. Um, there it is. <clears throat> Teams takes over your start menu. Awesome. So here you have the PR1 and the Samsung one. So now when I when I did this with the user. I set the Samsung one as the default. Now that should then say that the Samsung is default here now. Now usually you can only have one default printer for the user. So if I would log in now <clears throat> to the other server from within the server, so I'm logging in from two weeks again, I get these printers 
then but we selected the default printer uh, in as the user and that is then stored in the database so we should still be able to see um so we should be able to see um, i should probably have created a shortcut we should now see that it has stored the database the default in, for the user anyway so now that, that how that works is that it stores that in the database and it will pick the one that is in the list so as and as you're assigning it on based on location you will only you will not have those printers in in uh, any other location assigned to you and then that will basically assign it for you so now we got we're back to the PR2, and I think PR2 is the one I set as default, so that will that will do. Now, <clears throat> all right. So that is pretty cool. So that is how you can do it on a per uh, user level. Now, I wanted to show you one thing more around this because the second print dialog that we were talking about before, that is something that is quite common in, in all kinds of scenarios, but it is the the thing about it is that it has not been able to be doing on a print server before. Now we have figured out a way of doing that. So if we <clears throat> we we basically have to not use cached information so that we will talk to the printer itself. So if you look at the printer, we have something called advanced print features. Now this is basically the second print dialog for the print server. And so I have a couple of printers here. Now I'm going to show you another way of doing this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to a user instead. So now you can assign it on a user, a group, an OU, or a computer, right? So you can assign it on anything of that. So what I'll do is I will add the I will add the Xerox printer to my user test. And then I want to I want to do it as a allow users to add it. And now I'm going to do the this one as well. Allow the user to add it. And then I'll do the can one. Allow the user uh, to add it. So in this case, I would usually do a group, but I'm using it on a, on a computer because, um, or, or uh, on user level. So if I log in now, the user should be getting the user should be getting uh, the same printers as before, designed to that. Uh, Client name, but we also have a list of allowed printers, and I think we we will run over time today. But we'll um, have to cover that for a moment. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Um, so as we log in, we have the printers. There we go. So we have the printers here, and then those are the ones assigned to the client. And if I start to screwdriver print, for example. So <clears throat> what happens here is I, I see the printers that are here, right? And I have the default one. I could save it and I could change it and so on. I can also add a printer. Now, this is the allowed list. So there's two ways of doing this. You can either add it here and you get a list. Now I would do, I, I'll add the canon one, so I'll just add it. And that will, so it will ask me, and it's just, it will take a few minutes. It won't take a few minutes, I hope, because it should be fairly quick. So now I've added the printer, and now I should have the canon printer in my session. So here it's, it's, it's coming up here, right? <clears throat> now, another way of doing this is using the, the, uh, map feature so this is a map over our office and it will show you the printers that are actually assigned to you as a user so then i can click on the printer so i want to have the xerox one and then 
add that and then read the data. So uh, this is adding it so you can have the, the and you can import the map and you can customize this as much as you can and you will only see the printers that you're allowed to use. So uh, awesome. And now and you can also go back and you can set them as default and so on. Now, what's specific with these advanced print features is that it will load the manufacturer driver uh, rather than the, say if I were, if I'm using a, and this is not the answer. So if I create and start an application, <clears throat> and then I click print. Now, what this will do is that you see the printer driver, and it, this is, you saw that little tick bar coming out loading the manufacturer driver. So this will load the UI DLL on the server, but it's still using the screwdriver printer driver. So if we're looking at this one, this is not using, so this is still a screwdriver driver, and there's no other drivers, so there's no driver conflicts, blue screens, and so on. But it is, so this is the actual driver from the print server. Now, this one actually happens to have support for pin codes. So if I want to select the pin code and I want to type a pin code here, um, I should be able to do that. Uh, yeah, so you can select that, uh, and you you have the one you have one that where you can actually. And this looks different depending on which one it is. <clears throat> and we also have, so you can see this kind of one has other settings. And here you can say on, and then I can, so, and then you can change the pink code here, one, two, three, four. And then you go out to print for, and you type one, two, three, four, and you will get the printer. And now this is the print server printing. So this is not a client server. And this is loading the driver into your UI. And now, obviously, users would have problems doing this, but we also have a way of pre assigning these settings with something called print profiles, which we will have another demo in a couple of weeks going into more deep than this because we're, we're running out of time, basically. So, uh, I just wanted to show you that little part. So, I'm going to go back to my presentation and kind of summary this up to the end. So as we saw, we have the roaming user and we can have the default printer based on location. Really cool. Now this is the architecture kind of thing. So you would have a client or user here logging into the session agent. You have a SQL database backend. Uh, that is storing the information. You have the administration console. You have the print server in this case, and the printer. The print server could be uh, on your local network area, uh, basically. So how do this solve printer issues? Well, the print issues that we were talking about were spoiler issues. Now, you know, not able to print drivers come and go, uh, unreliable though. Having one driver made for remote printing on your server, there's two DLL files, there's one service starting, uh, there's not a whole lot going on. If you look at other drivers, too much noise. So this is this will make it really stable and it will just work for you. Now, slow printing. Well, obviously, depending on what you're printing and how you set it up, it will depend on how what speed you get, but compression, uh, streaming and the print uh, with this compression, the streaming features that where we spool each page and start printing quicker uh, makes a big difference. And then the print format that the TMF that means that it will actually come out as it's supposed to come out and not look as something else. So that solves slow printing part. Now the default printer, as we have seen, we have looked at different ways of doing default printer, which is a very common issue actually, but among many, many prospects or customers. As you can see, we can do, we can keep this in control in many different ways of for you. 
<coughs> printer naming sounds basic, but this is really important for the users or even to make some applications work. They can be reliant on the printer name itself. Now the support tickets. While removing these pull ratios, slow printing, default printer and printer naming problems out of your support queue means that you can do something else with your time. And usually IT admins do not have a lot of time. So time is, is something everyone needs. So now there's more to screwdrivers than this, and we will be talking about a little bit more about this in other webinars coming up later on. But there's remote printing. So this is basically if you do not have a site to site VPN, for example, in Windows Virtual Desktop, we can we can have a cloud connector and connect to your print servers. So basically, if you're an MSP, that could be different customers as well. Uh, <clears throat> there's also support for mobile printing, uh, printing from an iPhone, Android device to your network print servers and uh, printers uh, based on assignments and permissions as well using the same UI, same product. This is both of these mobile are, are parts of the uh, enterprise one. TCP IP client, if you're using a, for example, HTML client from Citrix or from Kameo, for example, uh, you can assign printers and you can have a separate client on your PC connect into the back end and we will print through a gateway. And we will look at that further on. Now, licensing screwdrivers in version 7, it is a, per, it's a subscription license per user in year. And there's also a service provider licensing where you pay per concurrent user and month. And so that is really easy to get started. You have the three different versions, Screwdriver Essentials, Screwdrivers Pro. These are the ones that we have shown today to get mobile printing, the cloud connector, or, or uh, what's, what's called system printing, uh, you would need the enterprise edition. Now, so the next time you find yourself in this position where you're trying to jump through loops or doing something that you, where you feel that, is this really what I'm supposed to do here? Well, there's an easier way. Remember screwdrivers, uh, screwdrivers, well, if you Google it, you'll find all kinds of pictures of something, but we actually, you need that screwdriver symbol. And printing issues will give you headaches, and then you need something that removes it. So think about this guy. Screwdriver removes your pain, the iPrint guy that is the intelligent pain tablet. So um, thank you for watching. And if you need more info, please contact me on my email or email sales or call the office number there and we will be happy to help you. Our primary uh, primary market is Nordics, but if you are based somewhere else and happens to look at this, yes, reach out to us and we'll help you anyway. We, we have the contacts in other countries as well. Thank you so much and bye-bye.